Hello friends, this is Slidehan for you. To subscribe this channel, click on the subscribe button that appear at bottom right corner or you can visit my YouTube channel by typing www.youtube.com slash slidehunt. Today in this video, we will learn about dynamic memory allocation. Here we will learn what is dynamic memory allocation and what is the need of it. Dynamic memory allocation is a process of allocating memory during runtime. Using dynamic memory allocation, we can allocate additional memory space whenever we need and deallocate memory when not needed. Now a question comes to your mind when we use it. We generally use an array to store data of same type and we know the size of data. But in many problems, it is not clear how much memory the program will actually need. In such cases, we declare an array where size is large enough to hold the maximum number of elements. If a large memory space is allocated and a few are used, then this leads to wastage of memory. On the other hand, it is also possible we declare a small array, but we need large space. In such case, array is not useful. So, what is the solution? The solution is dynamic memory allocation. Using dynamic memory allocation, we can allocate exact memory space what we need. C provides us some library functions that are used to allocate memory. And they are malloc or amalloc, calloc or calloc, and realloc. C provides another function to deallocate memory, it's called free. Before discuss these functions in detail, we will learn about memory allocation process. Memory is an important resource of computer and it is managed by operating system. When we write a program, the instructions and different variables are stored in different parts of memory. Here we divide this memory into four parts or segments. One segment is assigned to store C instruction like main, printf, scanf, etc. Another segment is used to store global variables. Global variables are the variables that are not declared inside any function. And these variables can be accessed from anywhere in the program during the lifetime of the program. Third section is reserved for function calls and local variables and we can call it as stack. Local variables are the variables that are declared inside a function and their lifetime is till the function is executed. These two segments are fixed in size but stack alters size as the program executes. The last segment of the memory is heap which can vary in size during program execution. Its size is controlled by the calls to the dynamic memory allocation functions malloc, calloc, realloc and free. Heap is a large amount of free memory. Sometimes we call heap as free pool of memory. Now we discuss this function one by one. First one is malloc or malloc. Malloc function is the most frequently used function to allocate memory dynamically. It is used to request for an allocation of n bytes of contiguous memory space in the heap area. And it is defined something like this. This function pass the size of the memory block in bytes as argument. Here size t is a data type that stores only positive integer value. So, you can consider it as unsigned integer. After a successful allocation, this function returns a void pointer that gives the base address of the chunk of memory or block of memory that it allocates. Suppose this is the heap section of the memory and it is divided into many small cells. Each of the cell is one byte. The address of the bottom cell is 100 next 101, 102 and so on. If we want 8 bytes of memory, then we write the statement something like this. Void star ptr malloc 8. 
the address written by the malloc function is stored to the void pointer ptr. Suppose in the heap area memory is allocated from address 101 to 108. If we print ptr, ptr will print 101 because the base address of this memory block is 101. But the question is why we allocate memory? We allocate memory to store some data. So we do not allocate memory randomly. First we calculate how much memory or how much bytes of memory we required. If we want to store a single integer, then we need memory block equal to size of one integer. So we use the function size of that return the size of the variable in bytes. Here we reserve memory for one integer. If we want to reserve memory for five integers, we multiply 5 with the byte returns by the function size of. So we can write the statement as 5 into bytes required to store one integer. Similarly for 8 integers, we can write the statement as 8 into size of int. And for n integers, we can write the statement as n into size of int. Here malloc function returns a generic pointer void star that can be casted to any required type. If we want to store an integer value to the pointer ptr, something like this ptr equal to 5 is not possible because ptr is a void pointer. To store an integer value we need to type casting. Typecasting is the process in which we force the compiler to explicitly convert the value of an expression to a particular data type. So we write here in star. This is called typecasting. Now this statement is valid. Next one is calloc. We can define the function something like this. Calloc function is similar to malloc function. But the main difference is that calloc function is normally used to request multiple blocks of storage each of the same size. By default the value stored in the memory allocated by calloc function is zero. But when we allocate memory using malloc function, it doesn't initialize the bytes with any value. So it takes garbage value. Another difference is that malloc function takes one argument but calloc function takes two arguments. First argument is number of elements or variables of a particular data type and second argument is the size of the elements or variables. Calloc function returns the address of the first block of the allocated memory. If we want to allocate memory for five integers using calloc we define the function something like this. First argument is how many elements you want to store and second argument is the size of data types in bytes. Here we want to store 5 integer elements that's why we write here 5 and this is the size of 1 integers in bytes. Next one is realloc. During the program execution, if you want to change the size of the memory, then you need to use a function named realloc. The definition of this function is something like this. This function takes two arguments. First one is pointer to the starting address of the existing block and second argument is the size of the new block. The last function is free. Free function is used to deallocate memory space that was previously allocated by calloc or malloc. Since the storage is limited, so it is good practice to release the memory space when it is no longer required. For example, here we allocate memory for 5 integers and the starting address of the memory block is stored to the integer pointer ptr. Now we free the memory and we write the statement as free ptr. This is it. Next tutorial we will learn how to use these functions in our program. Stay with us and keep watching.